Ridley Scott's 1982 sci-fi masterpiece Blade Runner. I have noticed to grow out of favour over the years among modern audiences, especially with the release of Denis Villeneuve's sequel, which does in fact appeal more to modern audiences, therefore slightly overshadowing the greatness of the original, I think. When I tell people Blade Runner is one of my top 10 favourite movies of all time, I'm usually told how the movie isn't that great, and if anything, the sequel is better. I do love the sequel, I'd rank it somewhere in my top 30 favourite movies, but I truly think the original is the most impressive sci-fi ever made. I think Ridley Scott's reputation has aged poorly among modern audiences too. Like Ridley Scott, making Alien and Blade Runner back to back is undeniably one of the greatest achievements a director has ever made. No two films have been more influential to their respected genre than Alien and Blade Runner. Yet, Ridley Scott is rarely praised as a great master of cinema anymore, even if he is long past his prime. I'm someone who has seen Blade Runner a ridiculous amount of times in my life, more than I could keep track of, so I feel I can truly put into words what makes this film so unbelievably special to this day. I want people to watch this video and feel they understand the movie deeper than they ever had. The movie starts with a bit of text to give the audience some context. I think understanding the text is crucial to understanding the film. Firstly, when the text states that the Tyrell Corporation advanced robot evolution to the Nexus phase. Why that is important to note is that no matter how human the replicants of the movie seem, they are to simply put it, extremely advanced androids. So no matter how badly they are treated throughout the runtime of the film, specifically by Harrison Ford's Deckard, it can't be forgotten that they are in fact androids. And I do not totally believe the film is focused on the idea of androids being human either. The theme of android life having the value of a human is not a theme that relates at all to the real world. It's totally a sci-fi concept that overshadows the real ideas of the film. I think it also important to note that not all replicants are as advanced as the replicants we see in the film. These are specifically Nexus 6. They are the most advanced replicant to exist. So even for Deckard, who as a Blade Runner has the job of hunting replicants who illegally roam the Earth rather than working in space like they were made for. It is the first time Deckard has ever dealt with such human-like replicants. He has this point of view that replicants are simply robots because he is familiar with less advanced models. And it is his encounters with the Nexus 6 models that make him question the legitimacy of their existence and their right to be respected as people. The first scene, along with incredible visuals that shape the world of the dystopian 2019 Los Angeles, introduces a Blade Runner and a replicant. The Blade Runner performs what is called a Voigt Kampf test, in which a Blade Runner will ask the replicant a series of questions designed to provoke an emotional response. The more questions it takes for a replicant to be exposed is a reflection to how advanced they are. Leon, the replicant from this scene being the brute out of the replicants we meet, doesn't take many questions before responding with emotion and killing the Blade Runner. If you check out different cuts of the film, this guy does have more screen time and is shown as an acquaintance of Deckard, being a fellow Blade Runner. We are introduced to Deckard who is called into the LAPD and given no choice but to come back and finish the job his deceased colleague failed to finish. That job being to kill the replicants who are on Earth. I always like this scene where Deckard is explained who the replicants are. It has such a comic book feel to it. The way each character is described to him is really over the top. The lines are admittedly a bit cheesy, but I think it serves as a great way to give us that exposition. In the past, I used to think why he is telling Deckard this stuff. If Deckard is a Blade Runner, surely he knows things like replicants having a four-year lifespan. But like I said before, the text does leave room to believe that Deckard has never come across a Nexus 6, and perhaps Nexus 6 is the only replicant advanced enough where they had to introduce a four-year lifespan. Deckard goes to visit Tyrell at the Tyrell Corporation headquarters, knowing that Tyrell has a Nexus 6 that can be tested with Voigt Kampf. Here, Deckard meets Rachel for the first time. The atmosphere is very alluring when they meet. Tyrell proposes that Deckard test on Rachel before testing on the Nexus 6, as he would like to see how well the technology would work on a human. After a long test though, it turns out that Rachel is the Nexus 6, but she doesn't know she is a replicant because her memories are implanted. She has been built to think she is a person where every other replicant before her has been aware of their existence as a replicant. 
Rachel's belief that she is human also works to blur the line of robot and human when it comes to Deckard getting to know her. Now we have met Deckard and Rachel, the third character to come is Roy, who serves as the antagonist of the film. The character is so detailed that we connect to him more than Deckard by the end of the film, so there is an argument there that he is actually an anti-hero. Roy and Leon speak of Leon's precious photos. Deckard has taken them from Leon's apartment for evidence, and Leon's care for the photos really speaks to this human aspect of valuing life. Leon is legitimately sentimental when it comes to the memories he has captured in the photos, despite knowing that his lifespan is so limited. This is the first example shown of this theme throughout the movie. Roy and Leon show to be looking for Tyrell, or at least looking for a way to get to him. To do this, they are going to the more accessible people in the ranks of the Tyrell Corporation, firstly visiting the man responsible for creating the replicant's eyes. The eye maker tells them to find Tyrell. They must find J.F. Sebastian. Rutger Hauer's presence as Roy Batty is so dominating, he really controls every scene he's in and creates this fearsome character with very subtle gestures. It's one of my all-time favorite performances from an actor. Deckard arrives home to find Rachel is there waiting for him. Rachel has essentially found out that she might be a replicant and has gone to Deckard to find out how true this may be. It's quite clear that Deckard wants to live life to himself, left alone while he drinks his life away, but he doesn't totally refuse Rachel despite hesitancy at first. Deckard breaks the news to Rachel as he describes memories of hers that he knows she has had because he knows the memories are implanted. This is obviously crushing to Rachel as she has found out her life is a fabrication. But what this scene really serves to do is create this empathetic feeling in Deckard. This is the first time he has seen humanity in what he deems to simply be a robot. He sees the emotion in her face and he sees that she is attached to her memories in the same way he is. We are then introduced to Pris, another replicant roaming the earth. She plays this role of the helpless young girl to work her way into J.F. Sebastian's home and gain his trust. Her role is more important later on. Arguably one of the most important scenes in the movie is when Deckard is sitting by his piano with photos of what looks to be pictures of his mother by the music sheets. Deckard dreams of a unicorn which plays into the final shot of the film where Deckard picks up an origami piece of a unicorn, left by his fellow Blade Runner, who we see leaving these little origami pieces around throughout the movie. These two scenes, and another moment where Deckard's eyes slightly go red, has created this idea that Deckard too is a replicant. A lot of people buy into this idea, but personally, after watching the movie about 40 times in my life, I just don't think he is a replicant. I feel Ridley Scott created this narrative over the years, so that there is more of a conversation around the movie. And it does play into a moment where Rachel points out the hypocrisy of being a Blade Runner, asking Deckard whether he has tried the Voigt Kampf test on himself. I think the fact Blade Runner is so open to interpretation due to its mystique is one of the things that makes it so timeless. But I personally think the Deckard being human stuff is too much of a reach. The scene of the unicorn was added in post, with the footage actually coming from another one of Ridley Scott's movies. The slight flash in Deckard's eye from this shot I think comes from the fact Rachel's eyes look like this too. Most likely there is something behind the camera that creates this effect, and Harrison Ford's eyes would have met it when filming, and the origami at the end was really there to tell Deckard that he is getting a head start. It's a sign that Rachel could have been killed, but Deckard's former partner is giving them a chance to get out of LA before they are to hunt it down. The origami being a unicorn is completely a coincidence, I think, and is only given meaning by an added scene. Deckard also fails to meet many of the characteristics associated with a replicant. Replicants are built as slaves to work off-world. In the sequel, the idea of Blade Runners being replicants is introduced, but I think it is clear that as of 2019, Blade Runners are human. For Deckard to be a replicant and not have any of the physical advantages, it doesn't make any sense considering his job requires physical prowess. Even Pris, who was designed as essentially a sex doll for the military in off-world colonies, is ridiculously strong. Even Rachel could probably kick some ass if she wanted to. Replicants are designed to be advanced in all aspects, so for Tyrell to make a replicant that is constantly beaten in physical practices, it would be dumb. Most importantly, I think Deckard being a replicant goes against what the point of the movie is to me, which I'll get to at the end. After using some futuristic tech to scan Leon's precious photos, Deckard is able to track down the fourth replicant on the hit list. This is Zora, 
I always felt she wanted a normal life on Earth even if her life was so soon to end. This again fits into this idea of the film being about appreciating life and how that can be the most human thing. This is the first time we see Deckard retire a replicant, and we really do feel it. It's beautifully tragic in tone. Blade Runner is a tonal masterpiece. I don't think there is a movie that is so perfectly dark yet beautiful in its tone. This gets carried on when we see how Deckard feels about killing the replicants. Although Deckard doesn't recognize replicants as people, the realness shown in their death is a stark reminder of their closeness to humanity. They have blood and have a very flesh-like interior. When they die, it doesn't exactly look like a computer being turned off. It does look like a person losing their life when he retires the replicants. Leon ends up beating the crap out of Deckard before being shot in the head by Rachel. Again, dying a very human-looking death. It does make sense that killing the replicants would make a Blade Runner question the legitimacy of the replicants' humanity, as killing them is indeed taking away their humanity. Deckard and Rachel go home together, and Deckard thanks Rachel for saving him. Rachel at this point is wanted just like the other replicants after escaping Tyrell, but Deckard has no intention of retiring her, not only because she saved him, but because I do believe he at least sees her as special by this point as he does see her human side and is clearly attracted to her physically from the start. I also think at no point does Deckard ever come to the conclusion that replicants are human throughout the film, which would explain the objectification of Rachel. Although I personally think the point of the scene would be served just fine if it ended after Deckard kisses Rachel on the cheek and she gives him this look, we do get a stronger showing of Deckard still not overcoming this arc of appreciating life. Rachel, feeling confused of her feelings towards Deckard, and her feelings on receiving affection from Deckard, abruptly tries to leave. Deckard aggressively stops her from leaving, and in a strange sort of way guides her into this sexual exchange. I have personally never bought into this scene. I don't think it was ever intended to be so uncomfortable to watch. I've seen some people try and blame Ridley Scott of romanticizing a rape, but I honestly think the scene is just overcomplicated and arguably badly performed by Harrison Ford. I just don't think as an actor he understood the point of the scene. Like I do think it is his aggression in the performance that makes it hard to excuse. The point of having the scene go in this direction, I think comes from Rachel not totally understanding her feelings on affection. As someone who desires to be human after coming to the realization that she is in fact not human, to then act on such a human thing like being intimate with another person is scary. So I think Deckard exists to show her the humanity within these feelings, the fear of intimacy that almost all humans have had at some point in their life, at least when they are new to it. Deckard, if anything forces Rachel into confronting these feelings, I believe. This is definitely a poorly executed scene though, I can figure out the intention, but I do believe this is just one of those scenes filmed where not everything clicked together in the making of it, and like I said, could have ended right here. Blade Runner is heavily influenced by the noir genre, and a scene being designed like this, I think comes from trying to fit into this noir genre, and it ultimately is an influence worth leaving behind. Blade Runner, I think, would be looked on much more favorably without this scene, I think. I would say it is a testament to how great the whole movie is, when it is still a highly ranked favorite movie of mine, despite having a scene I just don't care for. Even with the idea of Deckard being this morally gray character, a scene like this I think is too close to the side of evil. If they ever want to make another cut of the film, they can cut this down and nothing is lost honestly. A theory I actually do subscribe to comes from an idea brought up in Blade Runner 2049, that Rachel was actually designed by Tyrell to be the replicant closest to a human, so much that Rachel is even capable of birthing a child, and for that to be possible, Tyrell would have had to choose someone to impregnate Rachel, and who that meant to be is Deckard. There's a very good chance that apart from Tyrell, Deckard was actually the only human Rachel ever came across. So, Tyrell making Rachel and staging her meeting with Deckard so that they spontaneously fall for each other I think does work. Not only does it excuse their quick romance in this movie, but it further explains things once we move on to the sequel. Pris is brought back into the film when she and Roy are united at J.F. Sebastian's home. Here we see Pris and Roy's humanity shown in their friendship. They value friendship more than any human character in the film. J.F. Sebastian's only form of friendship comes from the things that he has created. 
these sort of lifelike toys that roam around his house, and he shares chess games with Tyrell from afar. Such things don't really compare to the closeness you can see between Pris and Roy. In this scene, when J.F. Sebastian is trying to understand the replicants, Pris quotes the French philosopher René Descartes when she says, I think, Sebastian, therefore I am. This line argues the idea to think, and to acknowledge your existence, is to exist. It's something we see much more of from the replicants compared to the humans. Their fear of death and the existentialism that comes to the legitimacy of their existence means that they think of their existence more than humans, where humans like Deckard take their life for granted. Even Deckard's name being so similar to Descartes is an intentional thing to highlight the film's relation to the philosophies of Descartes. Roy convinces J.F. Sebastian to take him to meet Tyrell. Roy's plan to ask Tyrell for more life. Roy meets his maker, and the hard truth is that just like being human, death is always something that is destined, and you can't earn more life. Even healthy people who do everything right to live a long life will die when their time comes. Just like how people who smoke a pack of cigarettes a day and drink alcohol have lived to be a hundred. No matter how much we want to live, we all have a clock that will stop ticking when the time comes. In the case of being a Nexus 6, that clock ticks for approximately four years, and there's no way of working around it. This obviously shatters Roy's world, it kills all hope he ever had, and in response to that, he kills Tyrell and J.F. Sebastian. Deckard is called in to investigate the home of J.F. Sebastian. Here, the final confrontation of the film takes place. Pris fights to survive her encounter with Deckard, showing to be much stronger than Deckard. But this is not enough to overpower the fact Deckard has a gun. Pris, out of the replicants killed throughout the film, has the most robotic death. Her death doesn't resemble the death of a person, and looks more like a computer malfunctioning. I think it's arguable that Pris is the least advanced of the bunch, as her intended purpose was to be a service model, where other replicants had a more practical purpose in the off-world colonies. Roy returns to see Pris dead, which is truly upsetting for him. He has lost all his hope, all his friends are dead, and he has done many bad things in his chase for a lasting life. All that is left for him is to kill Deckard and avenge his friends before he dies himself. At this point, Roy's body is shutting down. He even stabs his hand, as if the pain is what is keeping him alive. Roy has Deckard running for his life and eventually finds himself on top of the building with Deckard hanging off the side. This is where Deckard should be meeting his end, but miraculously Deckard is saved by the one meant to take his life when Roy catches Deckard and lifts him to safety. Here, we reach the most iconic moment of the film. When Roy does what is commonly known as the tears in rain speech. Obviously the acting is incredible, the scene is fantastic, but what really makes it so fantastic is that it brings the thematic concept of the film together. What the point of this speech is that Roy is telling Deckard of his love for life, his great admiration for the memories he has, but he knows that these memories and these beautiful moments will fade away like tears in rain. Deckard, as someone who has no admiration for the world, doesn't value the beauty of living, sees through Roy the true beauty of experiencing life as we know it. Even going back to Descartes, the idea to think is to exist. If you were to look into what it is to think of your existence, I do believe to appreciate your life is to think of your existence as you are thinking highly of what is around you. Deckard is surrounded by a city that actually is quite fantastic, yet he has no fondness of it. Roy was living a life of manual labor and looking at the beauty of space above him. He wanted to live to carry on seeing beauty. So, the only thing Deckard can do to honor the person who saved him is to continue life in a way that he appreciates and sees the beauty of living, which by the time we get the sequel, although his life was made harder, you can tell he found this appreciation in life. Deckard returns home to find that Rachel is still alive. He asks her whether she loves him, and she says she does, which is a bit odd given the context of their relationship, but maybe they spent a good night together off screen. I feel like the point of the dialogue exchange is more of a thing where he wants to know if she is willing to take this leap of faith with him. I've never felt there was love between Deckard and Rachel. I do see why Deckard would care for her, as she was the one that sort of opened his eyes 
and brought out this empathy in him for the first time. Deckard also took her in when she needed him, but the movie simply does not flesh their relationship out beyond that. The movie ends with Deckard and Rachel leaving Los Angeles now that they are wanted in the eyes of the law, with their short-term safety being promised by Deckard's former partner. Blade Runner to me is the most well-directed movie ever. The cinematography is flawless. The lighting is the best I've ever seen. The editing is so clean. The score is mesmerizing. And the world created is still to this day groundbreaking. Is the movie perfect? Not entirely. But I still consider it a favorite of mine and I watch it often. The movie is so perfectly crafted, it's so detailed, that I just can't judge it for the 30 seconds of poor filmmaking or a few lines I don't really buy. Sometimes I watch the movie, and these things don't bother me much. I think Blade Runner has to be watched in a way where these characters are in a world that lacks morality. There's such a darkness to it that the actions of the characters are in fact fitting to this world. These characters are not entirely meant to represent our world. The story is put into the context of a world with a twisted sense of morality, a world where the good guy is a killer, a drunk, and sexually violent. If Deckard was not such a dark character though, the point of the film and its best scene sort of gets lost. Deckard needs to be bad, so that Roy saving him will complete the arc of bad to good, from someone who acts out on his lack of love or appreciation in his life, to someone who seeks to create a life worth looking back on. In the end, for a miracle to change Deckard, he needs to have characteristics worth changing. So that is another reason I don't entirely critique the movie for the more controversial aspects. I think to appreciate Blade Runner fully, I need to make a video on its predecessor. So expect a Blade Runner 2049 video soon. This is Mansplaining Movies. Like the video, subscribe, and more importantly, comment. I'd love to hear any feedback. What do you think of Blade Runner? Do you think Deckard is a replicant? Do you prefer the original or the sequel? I want to hear anything you've got to add. Let me know.